Good day. You are welcome to the online scholar class, and I'm Ms. Fatima. I'll be taking you through biology. So today we'll be looking at ecological management, whereby we'll be treating biological association, tolerance, tolerance range, and geographical range. Now, starting from the biological association, the word biological association simply means the interaction and way in which organisms in a particular habitat relate. It is the biological association between different organisms, which might be voluntary and involuntary. What do I mean in this aspect? It means that in a particular habitat, we know we have varieties of organisms there. So the biological association means that how do organisms in this particular particular habitat, how do they associate, how do they interact with one another? So that is what the biological association means. Biological association is the interaction between different types of organisms in a particular habitat, which might be voluntary and involuntary. When I say voluntary, that means they might be interacting with one another because they want to interact, because they are ready to interact, because they are willing to interact with one another. And it might be involuntary because it's just happening out of nature. They didn't program or plan to interact with one another. So biological association, again, I would define it as the interaction and the relationship between organisms of different or same species in a particular habitat, which might be voluntary or involuntary. Now, there are different types of association in a particular habitat between varieties of organisms, which might be the same species or different species. The first type of association I'll be looking at is the symbiosis. With the word symbiosis, it means a close relationship between organisms, which might benefit from each other or one might benefit. In the symbiosis association, both organisms might benefit from one another or one out of a group of organisms is benefiting. So for a symbiosis association, we have different examples, different types. And the first one is mutualism. For the mutualism symbiosis association, it is the association between organisms in which both of them benefit from each other. What do I mean? When they say something is mutual, that means they are both gaining. They are not harming one another. It's a 50-50 relationship. So for mutualism in a particular habitat, both organisms are benefiting from this association. They are both gaining and they are not harming one another. So examples of such type of association, of a mutualism association, is one, we have protozoa in the intestine of termites. Now, a protozoa in the intestine of termites is having a mutual association. In this aspect, the termites, we know termites, they feed majorly on wood. But after feeding on wood, this protozoa in their, in their intestine help them in breaking down the wood. It's not just about the termites chewing the wood. After they chew the wood, is going to happen? Digestion is going to take place. The wood has to be broken down for the nutrients to be released. So this protozoa, it is the one that help the termites in doing what in digesting the woods. It is the one that help the termites in producing enzymes that helps in digestion. Why the pro uh, the protozoa is helping the termites in digesting the wood? The termite itself is housing the protozoa, and the protozoa cannot survive outside the termites. Now, in this mutualism association, there are two types. It can be obligate and it can be facultative. When it is obligate, that means that one cannot survive without it. It's all his life is based on it. Survival, sh shelter, protection is based on this organism. But when it is facultative, it can survive without it. It can decide that, oh, I don't want to stay in this organism again. I want to go to another organism. So in the mutualism association, both of them are benefiting. And it is of two types, like I said. We have the obligate and we have the facultative. When it is obligate, that means the organism is depending totally on the other organism. But when it is facultative, it can decide that, okay, I just want to benefit, shelter from this organism and move to the next. But by the time it is obligate, both its shelter, its food, its protection, its transportation is from this organism. But for facultative, it is just going to gain whatever it would want to gain and it can decide to move to another organism. Now, another type of association example for mutualism is the um, nitrogen fixing bacteria in leguminous plants. We all know that leguminous plants, they make use of this nitrogen fixing bacteria. How does it work? By the time the nitrogen fixing bacteria invades the root, the root nodules of this leguminous plant, 
it helps in increasing the numbers of root nodules. Thereby, the leguminous plant helps the bacteria in uh, anaerobic respiration. Now, it's a 50-50. This one is, the bacteria is evading the roots, increasing the number of root nodules, while the plant is also helping the bacteria in anaerobic respiration. In this way now, the plant is an obligate, is depending on it to help it in increasing the number of root nodules. But the bacteria here is a facultative. Why? Because it can decide that I don't want to, because I can also source for oxygen from other plants. So it can also decide that I don't want to stay in this plant. So in this aspect, the bacteria here is a facultative. It's a facultative neutralism association with this leguminous plant. But the leguminous plant is what obligates because it's depending on it for it to increase the number of root nodules. So that's another example of neutralism association. Another type of association is the commensalism. Is the commensalism. And for the commensalism, this is a relationship between organisms of different species in which one benefits while the other neither gains nor lose. Now for the commensalism, we have two organisms, organism A, organism B. The organism A is gaining and benefiting from organism B. But this organism A is not gaining anything. Neither is it losing, it's just there. It's helping the organism B. That's an example of commensalism. So one is gaining and neither losing. Why the other one too is gaining? So for commensalism, it is a relationship between two organisms of different species in which one benefits why the other does not gain, neither does it lose. So an example of a commensalism relationship is remorial fish and shark. In this association, the sharks, the shark, if the shark houses the remorial fish, it can also be at the back of the shark. And this remorial fish helps in cleaning the mouth and preventing the shark from irritating parasites that can arm, that are harmful to the health of the shark. Why the shark helps in housing the remorial fish and protecting it from its predators. So now the shark is not losing. Neither is the remorial fish losing. So they are both benefiting from this association. Remorial fish is gaining protection, is gaining food from the shark. The shark is not losing its own food. Neither is it gaining protection from the remorial fish. So in this aspect, it's the remorial fish that is gaining majorly from this association. So that's an example of commensalism. Now another example, another example of association that we'll be looking at is parasitism. Now in the parasitism association, it is a close association between two organisms, which one, one is known as the parasite and lives in or on the body of another. The host is derived from benefits and causing harm to, the, to it, while the host loses in the process. Now, in this parasitism, again, I quote, I said it is a close association between two organisms in which one, known as the parasite, lives in or on the body of another. Now, the host here is deriving benefits and causing harm to it while the host loses in the process. The parasite benefits from the association while the host usually suffer harm or may even die. Now, a common example that we know is dog and tick. If you notice, a tick is always outside the body of a dog, and that is known as an external para para parasite because it is outside the body of this host. Now, in this association, the tick is on the body of the host and it is sucking blood from the dog. In this process, the dog is losing blood, and if it is not controlled, the dog might die. So, this is a parasitic relationship whereby one is being armed and is losing in this association while the other is benefiting. And I said, major example is dog and tick, whereby the dog is the one that is benefiting from this association is um, withdrawing blood from the host while the, the dog is losing. It might die at the end of the process. Another um, common example is man and our worm that is in our stomach. Now, after feeding, the worm in our intestine they do what? They absorb the nutrients and they feed on the food. Why we were losing? Instead of the nutrients to go into our body system and provide us with the necessary nutrients that were needed in our body system, it is the one that we gain from this association. So that's another example of a parasitic relationship. Now, another association that I'll be looking at is competition. 
Now, competition is often based on limited environmental resources. In competition, two organisms are competing, fighting, and trying to survive on a limited resources. The resources is not readily available to everybody. So what happens? The organism, they compete with one another so that they can benefit from the resources. It is a negative relationship because one is, one is being armed and the other one is gaining. So it is a negative relationship. And for competition, it is defined, it involves, it is defined as the interaction among two organisms of the same or different species, which one outgrows the other and survives. Now, when you say some one outgrows the other and survives, it means after benefiting from the association, the other one is losing. That way, this one will survive, that one will go into extinction. So during competition, one organism benefits while the other was, it dies because it cannot compete with it, it can't survive. Now, moving forward, we'll be looking at the last type of association, which is the predation. And predation is a type of association between two organisms in which the predator kills the other, called the prey. Now, in this association, we have two organisms, A and B. A is known as the predator, B is the prey. The predator is the one that feeds, that kills the prey, while the prey is just like the food to the predator. An example of such association is your bed, your orc, and your rat. So, if you look at the association between these two, the orc is going to kill the world, the, the rat and feed on it. That's a predation happening between two organisms. It can even be of the same kind. It can be of the same species. So predation is an interaction, an association between two organisms in which the predator kills the, orc, the other one. So the one that is being killed is called what? It's called the prey. And I am, an example, as I said, is your orc and your rats, orc and chick, lamb, leopard and antelope, lion and goats, so on and so forth. Now, moving forward, we'll be looking at the other aspect of ecological management, which is tolerance. Now, for tolerance, tolerance is the ability of a living organism to withstand a little unfavorable change in the environment, which affects their survival. For tolerance, it simply means the ability to withstand certain conditions for a period of time which affects their survival. Okay, before an organism can withstand the cold weather, hot weather, it has to be what? It has to be tolerance to that kind of situation. So tolerance is the ability of an organism to withstand a little unfavorable change for a period of time which might affect the organism's survival. Now, for abiotic factors, it plays an important role in the distribution of organisms in various terrestrial and aquatic habitats of the world. The other biological, ecological management we'll be looking at is the tolerance range. A tolerance range is the range between the minimum and the maximum limit of organism that they can withstand. Tolerance range, again, is the range between the minimum and the maximum limit to which organisms can tolerate certain changes in their environment to survive. Tolerance range simply means a period of time, the period between the minimum that means the lowest and the maximum, the highest period of time they can withstand those changes. Some organisms can withstand the change and they do what they go into extinction. Why some they um, bring out more adaptive features and they survive that change? Why some don't and they do what they go into extinction? So tolerance change is just the minimum and the maximum limits of an organism to withstand certain conditions due to the change in the environment so as to survive. Now. The last one that we'll be looking at is the geographical range. Now, geographical range, it refers to the area where a species of organism can only be found within the minimum and the maximum limits of its tolerance. When they say something is geographical range, it, is, it simply means where we can find certain organisms due to their adaptive features. Some organisms can survive in a cold habitat, while some can't. So the ability of those organisms to survive in that cold habitat, okay, we know we can only find this animal in a cold habitat. That is the geographical range. For them to survive a particular habitat at a particular time is the geographical range. For example, the geographical range of tropical rainforest is within the equator and as a result of high rainfall and temperatures. You can't expect to see a tropical rainforest in a desert. Why? Because a desert is what? A desert is hot. So that's how it is. You can't expect to see 
like I said earlier, a rainforest in the desert because the desert is odd and the trees will do what they will die and they will go into extinction. So, so that's all on geographical range. In our next class, we'll be treating more topics. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.